Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in this ongoing tutorial series that I'll be putting together related to introducing Java programming to beginners. Now in the first video I went over the major aspects of Java, things like objects, classes, inheritance, interfaces, and packages, and we also introduced the primitive data types. And so I just want to build off of that and start to introduce the Java operators. And these are things that we'll use for the basics like arithmetic and any kind of math calculations, as well as some of our flow control statements that we'll get into a little bit later. So expressions in Java. If we want to do basic operators, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, we're going to use these symbols here. So for addition, we use the plus symbol. 2 plus 2 is the equivalent to 4. Subtraction, we use the minus symbol. 5 minus 3 is the equivalent to 2. Multiplication, we use the asterisk, so 2 times 4 is the equivalent to 8. Division, we use the slash, and so 17 divided by 4 is the equivalent to 4. And even though there's a remainder, we're only going to be worried about how many times 4 goes into 17 in terms of whole values for right now. If we wanted the remainder, however, we could use the percent symbol or the modulus operator. And so 17 percent 4 we get a remainder of 1. And finally we have the assignment operator and if you've noticed I've had a double equal here I just wanted to stay consistent with how the Java language actually operates and so I've been using these double equals to contrast with the difference between a single equal which is assignment. So if we wanted an integer value and we specified a variable called x which is of type int we would assign it a given value in this case 3 using the single equal now, assignment operators. Assume we have an integer var variable called b, which is assigned the value 20 to start each of these expressions. So the plus equal symbol, denoted plus equal, in this case, 20 plus equal 4 yields 24. So what we're really saying is take the variable b and add to b, or to itself, 4. So another way to write this would be b equals b plus 4. So this is just a shorter way of writing that entire statement. The same thing applies to subtraction. If we have b minus equals 4, we're taking 20 initially, and then we're going to subtract 4 from it and store it back into the same variable b. And in this case, the result is 16. The same applies for multiplication. 20 times 4 stored back into the variable b gives us 80. The division equal symbol, same thing applies. 20 divided by 4 stored back into the same variable gives us 5. And again, it applies to the modulus operator. So 20 divided by 4 gives us 0 remainder. So 0 would end up being stored inside the variable b. Now we have a few other operators. We have the comparison operator. And comparing things for equality, we use the double equal, which I used previously. So, for example, if we have an integer assigned 3, and we have another integer assigned 4 minus 1, which is also 3, we can say that x equal equal y, which means that both of these are the same. And in this case, this is a true statement. In plain language, we would say variable x is equal to variable y, or is equivalent to variable y. Now comparing for inequality, we can also use the not equal operator denoted by the exclamation point. So for example, if we have an integer x, which is set to 5, and an integer y, which is set to 10, we can say that x does not equal y. And this again is true, because 5 does not equal 10. In plain English, we can say variable x is not equal to variable y. Increment and decrement operators would apply as such. So to quickly increase a value by 1, we can use the plus plus operator. So for example, if we have an integer x assigned to the value 2, and we run x plus plus, now x is equivalent to 3. To quickly decrease a value by 1, we can use the minus minus operator. So for example, integer x is initially 2, we do x minus minus, and now x is actually equal to 1. There are a few more comparison operators we can use. We have the less than. In this example, 5 is less than 8. The greater than symbol, 
in this example, 8 is greater than 5. The less than or equal, for example, 5 is less than or equal to 5. In this case, they're equal. And the greater than or equal, denoted by this symbol, so another example, 8 is greater than or equal to 8. Once again, those two are equal. And now we have the logical operators. So we have the basic ones, which is the logical AND, denoted by two ampersand symbols, logical OR, denoted by two pipe commands, and these are right above the Enter key. You would have to hold Shift to access them. And then we have the logical NOT, or negation, which is denoted by the exclamation point. Now when we get into more advanced logical operations, which include the bitwise functions, we have the bitwise unary complement, which is the tilde symbol. Again, this is located just above the tab key. <clears throat> we have the signed left bit shift, which is a double less than symbol. The signed right bit shift, which is a double greater than symbol. And we also have an unsigned right bit shift, denoted by three greater than symbols. We also have a bitwise and operator, which is a simple single ampersand. The bitwise is XOR, or exclusive OR, which is this little caret, which is above the six number by holding shift on your keyboard. And the bitwise inclusive OR, which again is just a single pipe. And that does it for our operators. And in the next tutorial, we'll begin using some of these in our code and explain them as they come up later on.